So, uh, welcome to episode 2 of the Formula 1 Corner Podcast. Uh, we've just wrapped up the Australian Grand Prix, so we're about to discuss the results of the race and react to um, what happened in what was pretty much a very exciting race. Um, a bit more down towards the end, but I think we agree up and down the field, it was, a, it was a good race. Better than the fast that we experienced yesterday. So, just go through, going through the overall results, Rosberg won the race from Hamilton, followed by Vettel. And then Ricciardo, Massa, Rojon, and Halkenberg, Bottas, was it? Yeah, Bottas, and then Sainz and Verstappen. So let's start with um, Mercedes and Rosberg drawing first part against Lewis Hamilton. Did any of us expect that at the start of the race? Um, what does this mean for the championship to come? No, I, I thought I thought uh, this would be this would be another easy race for Hamilton given how fast he was yesterday but I think it's the start that bogged Hamilton down I, I think otherwise he would have ran off with the lead but the start was what slowed him down he got yeah, stuck I... in traffic and that was pretty much it yeah I, I kind of agree on that like, it's not for the fact that the starts were horrible I think that it was just been 2015 all over again, and it was just been Hamilton was going to So let's let's make no mistake about that. But thank God, like the start provided some kind of entertainment, even though it was like only for a very short period. Do you think that the starts were bad across both Mercedes? Is this like a technical thing? They need to sort out their clutches, or did Hamilton just make a mistake? Because we saw that he wasn't, you know, aligned to to defend against Rosberg even before the five five red lights were out. So. Not- only that, if you listen to the on board from Hamilton's view and Vettel's view, you can hear the gearing on Vettel's car. It's much shorter and much more aggressive than what the Mercedes had. So I think maybe it's just the setup for this race. They did not get that. Yeah, kind of. Uh, maybe it might be the same thing as what happened last year in Silverstone, right? Even for like Williams both jump them at the start. So it might be the same thing happening, happening again. I don't think it's going to be a permanent issue to the whole of 2016 though. Right, so the other talking point when it comes, came to the Mercedes was obviously Rosberg and Hamilton both nailing the strategy um, after the red flag. Do you think that this was just based off the fact that they had a lot of testing on the medium tyres um, in winter testing or was it just an inspired call by, by the Mercedes guys? And uh, definitely both both things came into play. I mean, obviously on the day itself, you have to look at what's going on in the race. But they knew the they had pretty good pace on medium tires. They knew the medium tires could last them even in this kind of conditions. And they're like, why not? Let's just go all the way on medium. And they knew that Sebastian Vettel had just put on two uh, put on a new set of super soft. So he would be at a disadvantage. But but this creates a problem, right? Because um, in the past when there was two sets of tyres, Pirelli could ensure that, you know, um, the tyres would not last as long as they did. Whereas now that there's three sets, you know, will we be seeing situations where drivers could ostensibly do 75% of the race on one set of tyres? Is, is that the direction that you, you want Formula 1 to head in the future? I think this might cause uh, the more aggressive teams to sit back a little because towards the end um, pushing on super soft is not going to be happening unless there's a big safety car period at the very end so we might mostly see most of the field finishing on medium and some here and there like Vettel pushing hard on the softs Mm. Yeah. yeah I think maybe if anything, it will, it will probably be tracked with the advantage that teams like Force India have because we know that they're very kind of the tyres. Uh, not so much for the other teams. So if teams can kind of bypass that advantage by just using the harder compounds every time, then it's, like, it's going to take away from that advantage. Alright, so moving away from um, Mercedes who secured a 1-2, although 
in not not the way that we thought they would. Let's talk about Ferrari. Um, Vettel third and Raikkonen retiring, but at one point they were running first and second. What what let's, happened? Let's start, what let's happened start the good Ferrari? stuff. Let's start the good stuff. What right. a start! Incredible. Yeah, but I mean. The, the start was great, but everything else seemed to fall apart for Ferrari, right? I mean, after pulling away, a red flag comes out, and then inexplicably, they put Sebastian Vettel on to scrub super soft tyres. I mean, is this a case of Ferrari once again getting the strategy all wrong, or do you think that they, they do you think that it was possible or conceivable for them to believe that this was the best strategy to, to run? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No way would. They they knew Hamilton was already on the mediums. They knew Rosberg would be looking at this opportunity to hit back. And what then? They, Mercedes, you already know they have incredible pace, so they don't need the super soft or even the soft to be at the very least competitive, as you saw. Vettel was having quite a lot of difficulty pulling away from Rosberg before he came into the pits. But do you think that, you know, and this is directed to both of you, do you think that if Vettel had taken on the medium tyres, he wouldn't have been able to hold Rosberg back? I mean, do yeah, I have he wouldn't. He wouldn't. In... He wouldn't. Because of the pace, the it's, it's, it's quite simple. So maybe in hindsight, we knew that it was a bad thing uh, to take a different strategy from Mercedes, but I think Ferrari might have just gone along this, this thought process, right? If you shadow the strategy as well, there's no way that like a Ferrari can walk a Mercedes over for it, 37, 38 laps. So they might have thought, okay, if we go on the mediums, it's a guaranteed loss anyway. Why not try something different? And if it works out, then it works out. If it doesn't, then it's right. But the corollary to that is that you know how hard this track is in terms of overtaking, right? We saw Verstappen, Verstappen the overtaking champion from, from last year, not being able to find a way past Sainz. And again, with Vettel and Hamilton, uh, Vettel couldn't find a way past. So, I don't know, 37 laps seems like a long distance, but it was possible for them to hold on. What kind of thinking is... You've all you've you defeated. You've already given up on first. How how can you just give up on first like that? Because you can't say, oh, we know uh, Vettel is going to be overtaken by Rosberg. So you you give Vettel a chance, put him on the mediums. Because you see, if you put him on the mediums, he will definitely be on the podium as he was today. He finished third today, okay, and he will definitely still have made the podium. The only people who are any of a threat to Ferrari are Mercedes, so he would definitely be third at least, so why not put him on the mediums, see if he can do anything with Rosberg and Hamilton. Yeah, I, I think it's a tough call for Ferrari to make, but I think the easier call for them to make was what happened with Raikkonen, right? Once again, as I predicted yesterday, shit luck for Raikkonen. Uh, gearbox failure, you saw the fire coming out of the airbox. <sighs> I mean, he he wasn't having a great race. He was second at one point, but then lost it on the on the safety car restart and never really challenged, you know, uh, the Mercedes or challenged Rosberg from there. Is Raikkonen losing it? No, I don't think it's Raikkonen's fault. Yeah, it, it, it's more of a team error that they can't get his car right. Somehow it's always him with the mechanical mechanical faults, kind of like Hamilton in twenty fourteen, but. You know, but, he was, on the but he wasn't as fast regardless in you know. uh, I guess I guess you can't say that he's losing it in general. I guess it's just that Vettel is extremely fast. And also because Rakuten is hard to drive, like he's losing he's going into his thirties now, so like at some point people tend to lose it. So uh, do you think he's last year as well? Like, do you think Rakuten will last to twenty seventeen? Uh, I don't uh, think so. I don't know. You're probably bringing um, Probably bring in, uh, okay, Red Bull will probably take in the staff and signs and then kick one guy out and the guy who leaves will go to Ferrari. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about Red Bull though, because Red Bull did really well um, on one of the drivers and really failed the other. So Ricciardo, brilliant yeah, driver, yeah, yeah. probably yeah, driving back, the weekend. Going back to 2017, so I, I think Grosjean might have a shout in, you know? Grosjean? Yeah, I definitely see. That's possible. Yeah. He did well today. Yeah, he did, but 
I don't know. I, I think Ferrari is aiming, gutting, gunning for, you know, talent that is a bit younger than that as well. Good has been in the spot a long time already. We'll, we'll see. But let's talk about Red Bull, right? Because for me, Ricciardo had the drive of the day. Going up to fourth in the Red Bull was um, a feat that I don't think we expected at the start of, of the race. But at the same time, Kvyat didn't even make the start and didn't even go out on track. Um, is the new Renault engine... Tech Heuer engine. Or Tech Heuer engine, Renault engine, a match for the Mercedes and Ferrari? Not a match, but it's pretty good. I think it's around Ferrari level. Because we saw Palmer pull off Sainz and Verstappen for the longest time. And mm. sure, some people may say that, you know, Sainz was just not really good at overtaking um, Palmer. But the fact is, the straight line speed of the Renault engine, or in Red Bull's case, that Tech Heuer engine, was, you know, uh, a remarkable. So, that bodes well for the future, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Renault, I think they are back on the ascendancy now. But they're still not at Mercedes level. And I don't think anyone will get to Mercedes level because you have Ferrari who've been close to them for two seasons already. And every season Mercedes just comes out with a better one. Yeah. All right, moving down, moving down the grid. Um, Williams, uh, I, I, I thought it was a very bo- fairly boring race from Williams. Uh, standard Williams stuff. Massa fifth, uh, Bottas struggling to uh, eighth. The only thing I really thought was uh, of note for Williams was that their tire life seems to be much worse than it was um, last year. We saw Massa struggling on the uh, on the super softs. Mm-hmm. So. I, I, I guess it's something that they have to work on in the next race. What really interests me though was the pace of the Haas because Groshan, sixth in Haas's debut. Race. He's a driver of the day for me. Absolutely incredible stuff and completely new machine. First time entrance into F1. I know they had help from Ferrari, but for Groshan to drive that car to sixth, it is. Absolutely. But, but let's not forget that Groshon had help because the safety car came out just as he was, uh, just as they hit his pit window. So he got a free pit stop as a result. What impressed me was how he managed to hold all the cars back after the pit stop. But I don't yeah. think that you know he would he would have been able to overtake these cars on pure pace alone. I think cars had pretty okay pace. I mean, they were fight. At one point, they were fighting with the McLarens and the and the Renaults for 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 you know thirteen, fourteen. But I, I I'm not sure that they would have managed to to uh, get up to safe, you know, without the safety car. Well, perhaps, but from what I saw of Haas before the safety car, it was just everyone else. Not it's it's a hard track to overtake. So I thought Grosjean would get there, but I don't think you'd get to 6th before the safety car. So yes, the safety car did help, but I think you would have been in the points anyway. Interesting. The other the other Haas, not, nowhere near the points. Um, in fact, in the gravel trap, the Alonso Gutierrez incident, whose fault was it from both of you? That's Alonso. That's on Alonso. Yeah, that's I mean... You didn't think that you know Gutierrez break too early or, or anything along those lines? It, it's fair. Some people break early, some people break late. Dif- people are defending usually break early. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, the Alonso crash though was probably much bigger than than you know any crash should have been at this at, at, in this modern era. Um, I didn't even recognize that there was a car when I exactly. when I first saw it. I, I thought and that that was just part of the part of the, the tire wall, you know. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, I zoomed in, and when I zoomed in, I it looked like Kubica's car from Canada. Do you do you think that 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 particular corner needs to be reworked because we've seen many incidents in it in, uh, on that corner in the past. Brando in '96, we had Jack Villeneuve killing a marshal in 2001, I think. And then we had, uh, we had was it, uh, Alex Woods and David Kukak coming together there as well. I, I'm not sure whether it was at, on that corner, but I know that they came together. It's a good corner. It's a good uh, corner. It catches out a lot of people. 
but it may be a bit unsafe, right? I mean, all, all the big incidents that we've seen in, in the last um, 20 years. Not really. Today today was not the fault of the corner. Today was Alonso not anticipating it just, the happens to be a, it just happens to be a heavy breaking zone where Correct. in general many incidents happen. So, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but what what Alonso's crash is, is sure to reunite is the discussion of the, the, the halo that's proposed for 2017, right? Do you think that the Halo would have helped Alonso in this crash, like protected him for anything, or would it have just been a hindrance? Maybe. I think that if you do, yeah, you go first. Uh, Nika, you, you go ahead. Oh, okay, so I think that if they implement a Halo solution, one thing that they need to bear in mind is that they need to get it out really, really fast. Like, if they need if they need to remove the Halo, it needs to be easily removable. Maybe you need, like, like two or three seconds, or a driver can press a button within the cockpit to eject the halo. So it can't just be something that's there like over the driver's head that prevents extraction, because that's one of the key points against the halo in this massive debate. It might have become a death trap for Alonso, yes. If if let's say the car had caught fire, that would have been it, right? I mean, he wouldn't have been able to make it out. Perhaps. For, for, for a burning car. I mean, maybe one way of making it safer is like when the car detects an impact of certain Gs. Um, you know, like you have the explosive bolt system in the Mercedes AMG SLS. Right. Uh, it blows off the door. So here, maybe like 20 seconds after, or maybe 10 seconds after it registers impact or registers the car coming to a stop, it blows off. The halo, right? I think that I think that the halo is a good idea in principle. I, I just I just don't think that it's the safest idea at this stage. I, I they they need to. Uh, I know Red Bull had this uh this concept recently of a Kenobi. I think that needs consideration a bit more than the halo does. But right, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, the other McLaren not not doing so well. Um, didn't really live up to the potential of the car from from qualifying. Finish below his, you know, grip position. Um, but then, not very, a very underwhelming performance from him and Honda. No, I I think McLaren were on course for points finish until Alonso put it in the wall. So I think it's just Button not able to pull off the same kind of race craft that Alonso still has even after languishing in the McLaren car. Speaking of racecraft though, Toro Rosso, signs of Verstappen were going at it. This this was a rivalry that's probably as heated as, as Hamilton Rosberg right now. Was science justified in not letting Verstappen through? No, I like let's not talk about science because science is gonna do what he wants to keep his position. I think I think Toro Rosso should have given the call to let Verstappen through. Number one, because Verstappen was was clearly faster than Sainz, and he was just being held up, and he made the pass on Palmer so easily later on. Number two, but Palmer was our position. It was Toro Rosso who screwed up his pit stop, slowed it down, and put him out behind Sainz. Okay, any contrasting um, opinion on that one? I'm not sure. Honestly, I think that key models in general are rather unjustified. But I think that since there was a, a, a team fault that got the second behind the side in the first place, right, they messed up the spot. Maybe something should have been done, but I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I have, a, I have a different perspective on all of this, which is that if, if Verstappen really wanted to get past science and if he really was such a great overtaker, Shouldn't he have just got gotten past signs on pure merit alone? I mean, like he, we we keep to, uh, you know playing Verstappen up as this this no, overtaking the genius, is, but the thing he is, it signs. Signs, signs, signs lets him pass. Uh, Verstappen makes the pass in Palmer very quickly within the lap, and it's back. It's back to signs versus Palmer, and Verstappen just racing away, which is fine for everyone. It's a win-win situation. Well, because clearly, yeah. Verstappen could do it against Palmer. He did it immediately, right after Sainz did it. Sainz got clear. Verstappen did it immediately only because Sainz kind of 
like got past Palmer, and then Palmer got a bad exit. So it's kind of a loss of momentum. So if it was the other way around, it could have easily been the same thing. Verstappen could have been stuck behind Palmer for like the longest time. Perhaps. And then, yeah, Verstappen like stabilizes the exit of sign uh, of of Palmer, and it just just gives him and his teammate like a way through. So I'm not sure what would happen in like if had the order of the Toro been switched, but. I guess it's not completely fair to say that well, Verstappen is so much better than Sainz. I don't think that's true. The two of them did collide towards the end of the race. Verstappen came out the losing end of that, spun his car. Who's, whose fault was that one? Uh, Sainz. So he, you think that Sainz should have left more room? Uh, yeah, he should. The fact that he locked up in the first place, that caused a collision, so that, that was Sainz's fault. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be pretty heated. the end of Verstappen's race. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure there'll be pretty heated uh, discussions in the debrief uh, back at the, back at the, uh, in the Toro Rosso garage. Let's talk about the remaining teams. I don't think there was anything to talk about in Sauber. Once again, you know, woefully underperforming. Not the Sauber that we know and love from the old days. Let's, let's, let's move past that and pretend it don't exist. Renault, though, uh, another team with pretty good race craft, um, especially on... Palmer's and I think Palmer uh, was the stand one of the stand up rookies um in today's race. He defended quite well, didn't he? Mm, yeah, I think he did. Um, not sure what happened to Magnuson though. Yeah, Magnuson was was just nowhere. I mean, sure he got a puncture on, on the first few laps, but he it didn't seem at any point that I could rate Magnuson again uh, above Palmer in this race. Um, what do you think, Shika? I think uh, Magnuson's Magnuson might have it in mentally just coming back. You know, his his return to F one was played like some glorious second coming of Jesus for some reason, <laughs> and and he, he he might be thinking, oh shit, now I have to perform, man. And there's a rookie on my team, and I have to beat this guy, even though I've not raced in an F1 car for over a year. That's and then true. He gets, and he gets out qualified by Palmer, and he's like, shit, man, this guy just this guy just showed me. So now he gets even more pressure on the race day. Like, all right, I have to pull it off today, and he. And he got punctured at the start, and he was like, oh shit, I'm gone. Yep. Alright, two more teams to talk about. Let's start with Force India. Um, pretty solid drive from Nico Hulkenberg, but an underwhelming performance from Perez. We mentioned briefly just now that the tires, the, the new tyre rules could actually hurt Force India. Do you think that the uh, the promise that they showed in pre-season testing uh, will not translate to, to you know, better results uh, this year? It might on the on the less tire heavy tracks. I like think. like what? Mm, well, not Singapore. Monza. No, not Singapore. <laughs> Monza. Yeah, that would um, be. So cheap, so cheap, so cheap. So cheap. I remember there was there was one year where like Rosberg threw the entire race save for one lap on one set of the prime tires. So if they were if they're gonna do the same like the same thing this year, I think that the tires usually need to be reworked. I, I'm really hoping yeah. that, that that Sochi will run the soft, super soft, and ultra soft, yeah, because yeah. that's That'll the be, only way to prevent, yeah. you know, the medium hair from being used. So we'll, we'll we'll see how that one goes. And lastly, Manor, we thought they would do better than you know last year, but Verline still one lap down and Hayento out during the red flag. Verline was not uh, before the safety car came out. Honestly, he was he made it to fourteenth on his own merit. But he couldn't hold that position past yeah. the safety car. So. Yeah, but um, purely because of the fact that yeah. he can't, so he can't be like the driver for that. So we talked about we talked yesterday about Haas and Mana fighting out for last. That clearly isn't going to be the case. Do you think anyone is going to challenge Mana to be last this season? McLaren, maybe. McLaren, maybe Sauber. Sauber. If, if any team, maybe Sauber. I think McLaren has to yeah. Sauber. Has to Sauber. Has to yeah, I, I agree actually. Sauber is not looking good. Not you might, you might, you might see Button there in the mix as well, actually. Big four for big four from Grace for the world champion, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, so no. 
let's talk about a few other things before we wrap up. Um, the one thing that, that caught my eye was the, the, the new tire rules for this year. Definitely producing a lot more um, strategic elements to this race. Um, is this an Australian thing just because Austra of, the, of the red flag and you know all the different permutations that, that occurred out of it? Or do you think we'll be seeing you know these discussions and these, uh, these really high octane races continue into Bahrain and into China? I think it's too soon to call on that because it kind of seemed like it's going to be standard strategies before the safety car came out and it also kind of seemed that there's going to be a bit of shake up with Hamilton down in 7th uh, but then the red, red flag happened and everything just changed so I don't think we can definitely say anything right now mm, Honestly I think that whatever kind of benefit that it brought uh, there's a chance that it could have just been amplified by the fact that there's a red flag if not for the red flag it may have just been a fairly standard race or it might have been like total chaos no one knows for sure until we watch the next two races so yeah I think it's still a bit early to comment but I, I think we can all agree it's probably a much better rule than than, than elimination qualifying uh, yeah but elimination qualifying is to be scared so yeah, oh, yeah. Right? short-lived. Yeah, so it's, like it's, it's, it's it's qualifying being scrapped. Uh, I, I thought think, I thought it was the right decision. There, there shouldn't have been a discussion about it in the first place. You know, I let's, right let's forget for, it existed. I think it was the right decision for quality 2 and quality 3, but qualifying 1 is going to go back to the old boring style where the, where the big guys just do one lap, shitty as it might be, just to stay above 16th. Honestly, I'd rather have I'd rather have the old format. Okay, uh, uh, on, honestly, I'd rather retain the old retain the old format for Q3, and if we have to use the elimination format, use that for one instead. Mm. Because Q3 was in the past, Q3 was what it gave like most of the excitement. So, if you really want to maintain that 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 elimination, just use it for the first two sessions, and the third session should be as it was in previous years. I have a problem with using it for the second session though, because I mean, we already saw in the second session, it was pretty boring. It was not like, you know, we had a lot of cars on track anyway, right? Like, yeah. so I, I'm not quite sure we really needed it for the for the second session either, but I, I can see where you are coming from. Um, let's, let's talk about, let's finally talk about um, reactions to the, the podium. Hamilton seemed happy, which is, which was surprising uh, on the podium. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was a good save. I mean, at one point it looked like he was going to finish like fourth, right behind the Ferraris and the So, you know, from fourth to second, it, I, I'll be happy. I mean, really. I mean, yeah, even even though he's won three world championships, he knows how lucky he got thanks to Ferrari messing up the strategy to go from seventh to second. And of course, Vettel deciding that he preferred the gravel track to the, the racetrack. Mm. Yeah, and, and also the fact that two means outside of his own control, i.e. the crash, like, he got all those positions back. So, no, I, I think what happened, I think what happened was that Alonso figured out that Ferrari was going to win the race, decided <laughs> that Ferrari cannot win the race because if Ferrari wins the race, then he's going to basically end up in depression. Um, scratch gate, scratch gate. So Ferrari will eventually win the championship as well, so he <laughs> needed to put a stop to that. And so he decided, you know what, let's cause a red flag. <laughs> and <laughs> he did it with Gutierrez, which is the other driver who was in Ferrari just last year. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that Alonso probably, probably uh, like snapped <laughs> in his head or something. Um, okay, let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about driver of the week. So, I, I don't know. I personally gave, gave it to Ricciardo. Um, Roger. And I thought he was great. I, I thought Ricky really had really, really gave a really strong drive considering the state of his car. Um, but yes, how, and how, how can you think that the Haas is, is, is a good car? It, it's not a very good car. You saw that Gutierrez was was languishing in last. Yeah, but Gutierrez had an engine problem. He mentioned it at the start, right, of the race. So right. we know but, the true pace of the car. And, I mean, you can say the same for, no. for Ricky Addo because he has, if it, you have, you have Newey designing the Red Bull car. You don't have Newey designing the Haas. 
Yeah, but I don't know. I thought that the I thought that Ricciardo really stepped up up above what the car was capable of. I mean, like uh, the Renault engine may be stronger than previous years, but I mean, I don't think it will. It it clearly didn't hold up, you know, against the, the the top teams. But he still managed to to make it outdrive, you know, the, the 2016 Mercedes engines in like Massa or Hockenberg. So I I don't know. I was impressed by him. Grosjean, yeah, star driver. Start the, uh, a team that maybe we don't know the true pace about, but I, I agree, fantastic drive. What about you, Minkai? What who was your driver of the week? Uh, Rio Harry. No, sorry, sorry. Rio Harry. That is it. Uh, <laughs> honestly, probably Golden. Even though we have to how good the Haas is, uh, as compared to his teammate, obviously, he did a great job. Um, in the points as well. So, yeah, great job. So no one here thinks that Rosberg did uh, uh was the driver of the week at all. Uh, I thought by second start, if anything, the bad start wasn't really like within his control. The crash that brought on the red flag wasn't either. So yeah, it, uh, it, 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 it was all strategy that won Rosberg the race. Poor strategy from Ferrari, good strategy from Mercedes. But but Rosberg had always had an answer to Hamilton this race. I mean Hamilton picked up the pace, but so did Rosberg. Didn't uh, he? Looking, looking from the past two days, I wouldn't actually say that was the case. He seemed like he had an answer today because like Hamilton was just so far behind. And when Hamilton tried to up his game in the last like 10 laps or so, Rosberg would simply just do the same thing. Yeah, it was in fact a lot easier for him. Because, mm. you know, like he had much fresher tires compared to Hamilton, who was probably fighting like who was fighting right. with, like the whole race. Right. So, yeah. Fascinating gentlemen. I, I think that this is a fight. Yeah. What do you think Mercedes have been doing all winter testing? They have been practicing sandbagging, not very hard for us, but to do. Oh, that, that, is, that is quite true. I think this is a fascinating fight that will go on for the rest of the season. Hopefully, hopefully Rosberg keeps up the momentum for subsequent races. I don't want to see Hamilton run away, run, run away, you know, with another championship without any challenges. Considering that Ferrari, you know, just doesn't have, doesn't seem to have the brains to, uh, to hold them up. All right. Uh, before we go off, um, let's talk about the next qualifying. I won't be around. Hopefully, Shikai, you will be able to anchor the whatever yeah. discussion we have because I'll be serving uh, our proud nation. Um, but let's talk about who we think is going to qualify on pole the next race. Uh, Hamilton. Shikai. Yeah, I think Hamilton again. And well, I I hate to disagree with you or to agree with you, but yeah, I think Hamilton. Will probably take it. Hopefully, you know Mercedes fixes their starts, um, or hopefully they, they don't, so that other teams have a chance of making the race a little bit more exciting for for the fans. Um, right? Are there any last things that you want to say about this race? Any um, last gremlins that you have? Pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, I think if the rest of the racing team is going to do like this, then right for a pretty good season. But obviously, we have to see whether that's the case in the coming races. Right, so that's it. Um, F1 experiences a triumphant return following the farcical qualifying that's yesterday. Um, it put on a good show for the fans, and hopefully this will continue for the rest of the season. Good job to Rosberg and Hamilton and Vettel for making it onto the podium, and we'll see you two weeks from now at no three weeks from now at Bahrain. <laughs>